Welcome back to another episode of Bridging the Gap. I am your host, Bridger Rogers, and today I have two young entrepreneurs, 19 and 25? 26. 26 years old, and these guys are crushing it. They're doing about $400,000 a month with their business, and we're going to show you how to make your first 100 grand a month in business in this podcast, okay? And these guys started off, uh, you guys lived in Pakistan for a little bit, right? Starting your business, and uh, they bounce back for some major setbacks. So if you're going through a rough time right now, this is gonna be a very inspirational podcast. We're gonna get into some very tactical things you can do to start making money quickly in 2024. Mo, Zarar, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sweet, I'm excited to have you guys. So you and I, uh, we actually met through Cole's boardroom, right? You guys are members of Cole's boardroom, right? For those that don't know, it's a $70,000 a year investment. Right. So just to be in the room already puts you in another, you know, notch up from a lot of people. And, uh, you know, one of the things I loved about you guys right off the bat was your guys's team, right? Uh, you guys have one other behind the scenes guy, Christian, you guys all run together and you guys are running like smooth. You guys each have your own little sector. And so, um, for maybe the people that, you know, aren't familiar with what you guys do, you guys want to kind of explain your business in a nutshell, how you guys help people. And then we'll get into your backstory, how you built it. Yeah, so basically we help entrepreneurs at heart launch and scale wildly profitable digital marketing agencies. People who are like nine to fivers or corporate workers or maybe contractors, freelancers. We help them have a structured business and that they can actually step into versus them just trying to gung ho, trying to do setting, closing, marketing, like trying to do all these things themselves. Mm -hmm. What we do is since we've already built our own digital marketing agency up, we have about 40 40 to 50 uh, team members. Mm -hmm. So they can use our team as their own team. So it's a complete done for you type of uh, agency model. And while we are helping them build that business up, we're also training them into becoming the CEO they need to become, right? In order to run that business successfully. Because you may agree, right? The, the uh-huh. level of money that you make is, is direct proportionate to how you think, uh-huh. right? So we need to make them think like a business owner, not like a freelancer. Uh-huh. So that's the biggest high level overview. That's that's awesome. And so um, what, are, what are some of the things that you feel like are the biggest pitfalls that a lot of beginners have coming into the program? Like where do you see people either not having the mindset to succeed and how how can someone listening to this put themselves in a position, right, where they have no experience to start making their first, you know, 100 grand a year and then 100 grand a month? Yeah, a lot of people, and, and when I say a lot of people, I mean including us, this is when our journey as well, every single mistake that I see our clients make, I have a lot of empathy because we made those exact same Mm -hmm. mistakes, Mm -hmm. right? So it all comes from experience. The biggest thing that I see is like overthinking. Mm -hmm. The smallest is like, hey, my logo looks like this. I want it to, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? Like, let's do high leverage activities first. Mm -hmm. Cash in, cash out. Yeah. It's like, let's try to create demand before we try to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Because there's no demand on the back end. Right? Like, there's no fulfillment yet. So people get very, very caught up on the back end. They're very, very nervous. They're very scared. And I can see why. But that's why, like, for example, our, our offer kicks in. It's like, you can just use our team. We've trained, we've recruited, we've resourced. Mm-hmm. Like, we have that team. So you can focus in on the marketing and sales front end, get that money, and mm-hmm. then you can develop your systems on the back end. Yeah. Totally. You have anything to add to that, Mo? Yeah. It's also like, <clears throat> if someone's done it before, learn it from them. Mm-hmm. Why try to reinvent it yourself? That's the biggest thing with, like, even just getting the right process and system. Um, but, yeah, that's the biggest thing even for us, where it's like, look, we found a process and system from someone else. And it worked for us. And yep. we kind of scaled it up to ourselves. And now we have our own thing. That's yeah. awesome. So let's let's take it back to the beginning. Cause I wanna I wanna really, you know, show the the audience watching, right? How do you build, you know, a multi seven figure company, right? What what were some steps you guys took and walk? You know, you guys didn't grow up rich, right? No way. <laughs> yeah. Where did you guys grow Middle up? Class. Middle, Middle class. Middle class. Okay. Yeah. And did you were you guys born in Pakistan? No, no, no. So we were okay. born here. Born in I mean, the United States. You can go into that story if you'd like, but let's we get, went yeah. over there for business. Okay. Yeah. T- walk us through guys. This is crazy. So, uh, w- when you were telling me this story, dude, my, my job was almost on the floor. Do you guys remember this? We're at Daniel, you guys are yeah. sharing it. So I would love for you to share that story. Cause I think there's a lot of lessons that, you know, yeah. the audience can pull from that. Yeah. I'll try, I'll try to compact it as well. So basically, um, I was going to San Jose state university, right? I was going there for, I was majoring in business. I wanted to be an entrepreneur and my professors, the people that I would talk to, I'm like, where am I, man? Like, this is just, I feel like I'm like some sort of like box, uh-huh. you know, and I'm asking, I'm truly trying to give it a chance. Uh-huh. Like truly from a good heart. It's like, Hey, I'm going to the professor. Like, okay, how many businesses did you have? Well, I never had any. So I'm like, uh-huh. well, hold up. And then I asked multiple professors. I actually like scheduled my time really, really like rigorously. And then I would ask the students like, okay, where do you see yourself in five years? 
and then like the answers that I'm getting, I'm like, man, you guys are delusional. Like that's, that's not how things work. So I decided to drop out. But before that, so I was going, you know, as a freshman, the first semester I went after, after that, I was just like, you know, I told my parents I was going, but I was just <laughs> locked in. I was just trying to learn like this digital marketing yeah. agency thing, right? Marketing sales, whatever it is. Like I was trying to get my skill sets up. Uh, and then from there, to, like, you know, we invested in a, in a mastermind. You may know her, Kat Howell. Do you? Uh, no. No? So actually, Cole, that was Cole Gordon's first mastermind yeah. as well. So we okay. were in the same, same mastermind huh. yeah. together. The only difference is he was three months before us. So, but we're in, we were in the same alumni group. This is oh, when wow. he first started as well. Okay, cool. So, yeah. And then from there, it's like uh, we went into that mastermind. After about nine months, we landed our first client. But yeah. as soon as we landed that first client, we made like 24 grand in like 10 days. I was like 11 making sales funnels. Yeah, 11 so years old? Yeah. Funnels, yeah. Dude, I would take, wow. I would take um, NFL teams and take their color code because they've done all the research themselves, right? And I'll just design like our clients' like funnels with their color code. So like I know orange and like like the Dolphins colors, right? So it's like orange, blue, and like green. I just take that and just dump it into like a click funnel thing and it would match perfectly. And dude, the clients would love it. So he was a fulfillment guy <laughs> at 11 years old. At right? 11 years old, yeah, started yeah. building funnels, yeah, dude. Yeah. Where did you guys get that? Where did you get that mindset, dude? Like, was it, you know, you saw your big brother, you know, wanting to kind of get into it's it? It's a like, mix. So not okay. only my brother, but my dad. So my okay. dad, pure hustler. He came to America when he was 16 years old. Dude was living off on of chocolate, chocolate, man, chocolate for three food. days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He ate chocolate? For like three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was 16 years old. Dude, that's better than a lot of other foods I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, those the dollar chocolate bars, you know? At the, oh, wow. Yeah, the Snickers bars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So 16 years Pure old. Pure immigrant story he Pure has. Right? And then he story. ended up like making, he was like making 200 grand a year uh, working as an IT specialist. Like he was used for work for Verizon, Sony. Companies used to fight for him. So we yeah. learned a lot of the hard work of like, he would always say skill, always, he says, invest in your skills. And I think that's something that you do as well. Like even the people here, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. It's the skill set that matters because no one can ever take it away from you. Uh -huh. No government can come, no matter what, you're always gonna have it, Yep. right? It's always in your brain. No yeah. one can uninstall that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, once you have the skill set, right, you can go to zero and you can get back on your feet really, really quickly, yep, yep. right? Like for example, when I transitioned with Kino Body, right? I restarted my company first yep. month, made like 28, 30 grand. Exactly. There right. The first month. Right. And and it's only going to go, you know, it's, it's going to get better. So, so yeah, talk to me about some of the skills that you, you think are the most important to start. Like if you could just pick one skill to start, what do you think that would be and why? Me personally, it would be sales. Like I'm in sales right now. Mm -hmm. Sales has drastically changed my life. And if you think about it, like, um, I've heard a lot of people say this before and it didn't really make sense to me till now since mm -hmm. I'm in sales now, but like as soon as you're born, Mm -hmm. You're already doing sales. Dude, like if you're telling your parents, hey, I want to sleep over with my cousins. Dude, that's mm -hmm. a sale. Mm -hmm. All the way up to asking people for $20,000. Yeah. For life savings. Dude, up to that to like even when you're about to die, like life insurance. Or like even um, even like when you're planning out your burial. Talk like, about dating, man. That dude, <laughs> everything is sales. So that's the biggest yeah. thing for me. Like I would want to master sales. Mm. Yeah. That's the biggest skill in terms of my opinion. Like just for me. Yeah, I think... Um, Marketing and sales go very, very hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like sales, in my opinion, is just an extension of marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that skill set, Mark, because marketing, you have to generate leads. Like you mm -hmm. could be the best salesperson, but if you don't have anyone who's, yeah, yeah what's, what's the point totally. of that, right? Yeah. So it's like understanding and creating that dynamic purposely, getting the right people in and then closing, that's the supreme skill set. And then if you learn, for example, high level marketing, high level sales, it's like you stack these skills together. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're unstoppable, man. That's unstoppable. Exactly unstoppable. <laughs> that's exactly what we need. Yeah. Dude, that's exciting, man. And what what was the growth trajectory? So you guys combined that. And uh, and so why did you go to Pakistan? Yeah, I think it, it goes perfectly. So we landed that first client. Uh, this is April of, I think this is 2017. Okay. In June, we're like, all right, you told the whole family. Let's. <laughs> So here's here's the reason why we moved. Okay. Right? <laughs> we, <laughs> this and some some of the things like I'm not saying you guys should do it, but it's like maybe look at the thinking of how we think. And sometimes you need that in business. You just got to be very bold and very aggressive. And sometimes you don't even know, but it's like you learn, you know, you just got to do things sometimes, right? It's just yeah. like taking action, right? It's huge. A lot of people kind of freeze up. So anyways, we we were like, all right, cool. We have a system. In 10 days, we'd pulled in 24 grand. But then we we're like the contractors we had were in the US. So it's like we got 24K, but it's like how much we're actually making. It's like, yeah. what's the point of business? Then let's just get a job. Yeah. The last thing we wanted to do was buy ourselves another job. 
Totally. Right? So we were like, all right, what are some models? Philippines, India. We started going crazy on the research. And between in about six weeks, we realized like Pakistan, because that's our roots as well. Uh-huh. We had uncles there. They were like, oh, yeah, you pay someone like three, four hundred dollars a month. And they're pretty good. And they're like, we're yeah. like, what? So we're like, all right, let's just move the whole family. there. Talk about that sale to my yeah. mom. Oh, my sister, even him. So he was pretty young at that time. He was like, I have friends like the cultures. They were like, Dude, I had to go to high school there. You went to high school in Pakistan? Yeah, what yeah, was that yeah, like? Yeah. Dude, I would get, okay, it's probably not, I shouldn't share this on camera, but I used to get beat up <laughs> by, by the teachers. Yeah, like, by the teachers? I, I was sitting there one day, friends to the left, he gets whacked by a laptop, like a straight laptop. <laughs> a laptop? You know, the floppy disk comes flying out. <laughs> what? Dude, and I'm just there, like, just hoping this guy doesn't look at me. It was crazy, but um, <laughs> I, I want to change it though, because the amount of discipline I learned from that school, dude. <laughs> Insane. I use that in sales. Use that in our own business, running teams as well. It's the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. Dude, that's wild. So we moved the whole family there. Okay. And you closed them. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so wow. between my dad, me and my dad. Our dad is also a partner. He's back and he manages okay. that team. We still have that team. Okay. You do, yeah. yeah, we still we have like 50 family people business. there, man. Oh, wow. Like, we still have, uh, we have that's one That's great. Office. Yeah. We had six. So I'll talk about yeah. how we grew to six offices, Jeez. 120 employees at 23 years old. Yeah. That's crazy. But um, so it was, so we go over there and then- we had we we get an office actually right before we get there. I had my uncles go in, pick out the furniture and all that stuff. And from there, yeah, we were just um, you know we're just we're making like twenty to twenty five k a month, something like that. And uh-huh. we and then we we scaled to, to about seventy five k a month. And then from there, it's like all right, what do we do next? Because our life was completely automated, man. Like we didn't, we were depressed. <laughs> no, yeah, I swear nothing wow. to do because we had team like a comm manager. We had project managers. We had the copyright. Like, everything's there. Wow. What are we supposed yeah. to do? So you go to your team. Imagine this, right? In the beginning, everything's about you. Yeah. But then if you if you use your brain, you can set it up in a way where you have the right people. And then you go to them and they're like, we don't need you. Right? In a nice way. But And then you're just yeah. like, I'm useless. Good. Yeah. That's, that's real business, though. A yeah. real business is there. Like, without you, it should be continually mm-hmm. to grow. So yeah. we're like, all right. We still have the entrepreneurial bug in us. What can we start? Hmm. Like what, what, what else can we do? That's where we decided to go into the software side and we huh. can get into that, but it's, uh-huh. yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So Pakistan, so you're like, okay, I could be paying a bunch. Like I lose all my margins for this business, paying, paying people here or Pakistan. I already, you know, have the roots in Pakistan, right? I can pay three, 400 bucks a pop high margins and I can build that culture in person. Mm-hmm. So you start building the culture. Where did things go wrong? So this is where like we go into the software side, right? Because our digital okay. marketing is completely automated. We're just chilling. It was good, yeah. 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 So from there, we went into the software side, right? Mm-hmm. We wanted to the next level. We knew there's a lot of money there, right? I think there's a saying, it's like software is, I can't, I'm going to butcher it, but it's kind of like, it's it's as similar to drugs. Like it, it, if you can figure out how to sell it. Because it's recurring. It's recurring. It's one of the best business models huh. you can get. But it's very expensive. Like yeah. it's, it's hard to crack. It's very it's hard to crack. Yeah. What we did was though, we partnered and okay, so here's the thing, right? Peter Thiel says this, it's like finding value in places that no one else can. And that's something that we activated the value of Pakistan. And to yeah. some people they'd be like, Pakistan, third world country. Yeah, it, here's the thing. You you make 75K a month there, people start to talk about you. You're It's like you're making 5 million a month. Yeah. And then what yeah. happened was we started getting a little bit of clout, right? In, internally in that little bubble. Mm-hmm. And the people there, they're extremely sharp, man. Like their level of, they will, if they have the opportunity to come to the US, they will run circles around everyone here. Huh. Because they just don't have this vehicle, uh-huh. right? But they have that level of mindset. They're just kind of stuck there. So huh. we we activated that and we leveraged our name and who we are because we're American and they love that because we have they have access now through us. Uh-huh. So we became the face of this and we partnered with other app developers, you know, small little companies. And we had a YouTube channel. That thing blew up, man. We, huh. and what we were doing was we were just doing complete marketing on that. It wasn't me, it was someone else, but he was using me as the face, as the successful, you know, successful entrepreneur. People started coming to us with bags of cash. So people's life, no, was, that's serious. It was no, 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 no. Okay, so check this out. Grandmas, bags of cash, guys. Dude, grandmothers were no, no, bro, selling I'm, their gold. To, to, to do what? To just give it to us, invest it. They were like, just invest it. And in what? So in our, in our, they just want to be part of it, right? Part it's of like, the software company. So it's no, like this, just right? with us. They just want to be associated. With oh, us. they liked your guys' stuff. They want to make money. Like yeah. people, they there's so much poverty in those countries, hmm. so much, and they don't know. They have no skills. Like skill sets when it comes to like, um, like marketing sales. They don't know any of these things. They're very hmm. good men. They, they can like, 
they're very good in other aspects, but they just don't have the skills that we have with technology and stuff, mm -hmm. right? If that oh. makes sense. So they wanted to latch on us. They're like, hey, man, like, take our money. When I say bags of cash, I literally mean it. There was a story where this guy came in, $40,000, random dude. We told our team, office. and this is where things start to go really, really bad, right? So <laughs> we so we had, we had, we had, you know, we had these investors. I think we raised like 150 grand. Yeah. So we got like furniture, we got the office space, and I don't know, maybe we can pull up some of the pictures. Um, yeah, we'll throw them video. up, yeah. But uh, we, we, we were just like getting team from other places. Um, and then from there, uh, one thing led to another, we grew too fast, right? Mm -hmm. Our Everybody's just like, oh, money's coming in, perfect. So the dude, like our accountant is just pulling in cash because we just had a team meeting. We're like, you know, let's let's start to raise more money. But that was just an idea. So we I come to the office the next day, they're like, yeah, we got 40K, okay? From who, what payment plan, no what operations. are we talking about? So here's the thing, some dude walked in and there's a lot of gangsters there, all right? <laughs> And they, the government has a scheme where they turn black money into white if you if they invest or if they buy real estate. Yeah. So these dudes are just walking around because we had a really nice setup. Like when it comes to the tech, you know, it looked very futuristic. So the dude walked in and he was like, "Yeah, I wonder, what is what are you guys doing?" And our accountant was like, "Oh yeah, invest invest with us." So the dude was like, "All right, here's forty k. What what does he have?" Easiest close of all time. <laughs> and he collected it, and we're over here. It's our face though. We're like, man, we don't want to deal with no gangster. Like, what's going on? So. This is just one story. We grew that fast and I didn't have much control. People just started to just say, yeah, it, it was like a, it was a chaos, man. It was like a zoo, <laughs> right? The wolf of Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, our name is there. And that's where things just poof, blew up. 850K in debt. In, in about five months. Don't do business with gangsters. <laughs> and another thing, it was like this. Look, suppose we bought an app for $80,000. Okay. And our idea was to put in like an additional like, 50 grand and to develop it. And we would sell it for like 300 grand. That was the idea behind it. Now, suppose we put in $80,000, we buy the app and now we're developing it. Dude, our employees, some of them would go in with USB sticks, plug into the computer, steal all the code, take it back home, plug in their laptop and upload it on Google Play Store. And now the Google Play Store is looking at two apps, same exact code, everything's the same. Do they take both apps down? And we just lost 80 grand. That's how we lost a lot of our money. We hired basically in a nutshell, we hired the wrong people. We went too fast, too aggressive. Yep. It's like the culture was, it's like less relaxed. We should have, I mean, if I, in hindsight, let's take it a little bit slower. We were just taking teams, man. Like forget interviewing people. It's like, we're interviewing the manager. We're like, cool, bring your whole team, seven, eight people. Oh yeah. So we grew from like 35 employees to 120 in about four months. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't work, dude. With zero operations. With no, our <laughs> operations were... Not good. So now you guys are doing something where you guys feel really good about it, right? Because I see you guys are freaking fired up. You're dialed in. So you guys learned that growing too quickly, having these, you know, super bold, audacious goals are good, but really not. It's better to build slowly, step by step, brick by brick. So now you guys have learned that. What have you guys built since then? So we went, we went back to our digital marketing agency. We're like, all right, we have 850K in debt. What can we do to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, like we couldn't sleep at night, man. Like, dude, I bet. It's, it's. Yeah. Gangsters are knocking on your door, dude. Oh yeah. No, literally. They, no, <laughs> no, they came in. It. Yeah. They, they came in. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, like even going to school. So I, I dropped out of school, but yeah. while I was still going to school, I had to be really careful. Like just like, tr like transporting myself there, dude, I had to be really careful. <laughs> they would show up to our house. I remember yeah. I was sleeping and I'm like, who the, who let this person in? But I'll tell you what, they had a lot of respect. Yeah. I I, they, I know it's going to sound weird. They had a lot of respect because they knew we had good intentions. Like us, right? Those people ran away. What Like, you know, you can only control someone so much. Yeah. They realized like they're smart. They're good. Like, you know, not overall. Like in some aspects, they're really, they have a lot of values. I'll just say that. Right. And they, they realized that and they they were like, all right, so we came up with good payment terms with them and, you know. To pay them back, you're saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Even well, though it wasn't sense. our fault, but still we're responsible. Yeah. Right. It's totally. our business partners who stole, but it is what it is. Yeah. So you guys learned that. Wow. So, so extrapolate some of these lessons, right? Because that's a crazy story. I mean, this is yeah. like Wolf of Pakistan, <laughs> dude. I mean, this is nuts, dude. Okay. See, 11 years old, right? Dropping on high school, gangsters. So, so we'll extract, you know, what could, in hindsight... Show me where you went wrong so that someone watching this, if, they, if they're if they on their journey, what are some of those alarm bells, those yellow flags that came up? You're like, dude, I should have listened to that. Yeah, it's definitely like people, man. At the end of the day, it's just pure people. Huh. If we had the right people, I mean, we gave away cars. 
Like it got really, yeah, pictures of all this. Like, cars, motorcycles, to employees. And bonuses. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was wild. Like it, it was it was amazing. And it's kind of like everybody, I was 23 years old. Dude. Right, like of course we had other people as well. Like I, you know, I'm not gonna take all the credit. Like there was a lot of other people, but I was like the face of it. It was pretty. It was pretty sick. But um, it's just like growing way too fast and not realizing like there's other problems. There's consequences that arise with that. Right. Every and the, that's the problem. Everybody, all they talk about growth, scale. It's like, all right, what happens when you get there though? There's yeah. there's yeah. other problems. Right. Like you get a lot of money. There's other problems that you never even thought of that arise. Yep. Right. So being aware of the whole scenario and like picking the right people, man, that's the most important thing that I'll say. How do you pick the right people? It takes time. I feel like it's not, I mean, Amazon does this very well. It's like if they, if they hire an executive, the higher level they are, they interview them for a year. The last interview, what I've heard is they take them out to dinner and they count how many times they say thank you. That person says thank you to the server because they know that server can do anything for that person. They want to see the character of that person. So in hindsight, it's like, like I said, we weren't even interviewing. The, we were just like, we were to interview the manager. Perfect. Bring your whole team, bro. Let's go. So he's making that. And like, we're not even. And then we're trying to raise money. We're trying to continue our digital marketing agency. So we're just like really all over. And scale too fast. We scale too fast. And then, of course, people are always going to bring their best foot, right? They're never going to share their weaknesses. They're never. So it's it's difficult. So I would say it's like hire slow. Like uh -huh. hire slow, fire fast. You know that, that saying? Yeah, the saying, yeah. yeah it's okay, cool. That, dude, I appreciate you guys sharing that. It takes a lot of strength to share, you know, where you went wrong and learn from that and bounce back, right? So, so let's, okay, so walk me through, because I think a lot of people can relate to that, right? We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen down in life. And there might be somebody watching this right now that's literally at the lowest point in their life, right? They're, you know, maybe it's not 850,000, but it's something, right? They break up some sort of, you know, they're in a hole. I'd love to hear from each of you guys. What did you guys do, right? Because you said earlier, yeah. your thoughts determine your future. So what, yeah. how did you guys Bro, start to it, shift your thoughts, your habits? How'd you bounce back? <laughs> it was like mentally, it was the wildest thing. Because we made millions of dollars before. And we we're, by the way, we had no, let, let me explain something. Like when I say we paid these people back, the amount of sacrifice we went through, literally open up the fridge, there's no food. And we, we no. made millions before this. We like everything, whatever personal, we were selling stuff, man. We put our car up for sale. It, it didn't sell, but <laughs> we literally put our car up for sale like twice. Like this is the stuff where we borrowed from our uncles. We borrowed from our, the people that just to pay off people. Mm -hmm. So when, when these people saw it, they're like, okay, these guys, like, there's no, and we have, we have American passports. We can just bounce. Yeah. They can't mm -hmm. touch us. Mm -hmm. We're like, no, 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 no. We're staying That's right not there. How we do business. We're, we're right here. You want to kill us? Go ahead. Like, it's fine. Like, <laughs> like, at least we want to live with ourselves, right? Like we want yeah. to be able to be like, all right, we did what we had to do and we, we, we did totally. the right thing. So mentally, man, it was Oof. wild. It's like this. We used to, you, you see this little uh, water bottle thing, right? Yeah. I'm sure you get your water delivered. Yeah. So did we. Yeah. We couldn't even, so everything, we, we looked at our expenses, we're like, all right, cut, cut, cut. So we're like, all right, now, you know where we went for water? At a government facility. And the people there who are standing in line, they're making like $100 a month for their whole family. So now you're standing in line behind someone who makes $100 a month for their family. And here you are wanting to make 100K a day. Make that make sense. The conversation <laughs> is like, it's like we're mind fucking ourselves. Yeah. Right. So we, here's our coping mechanism. Okay. We started, we had the best time of our lives we started laughing about it we're like look how insane this is and it's we started ridiculous. documenting yeah. we have huh. videos for every piece of this by the way. everything that i'm wow. saying we have pictures and videos because we knew we we're gonna make it out so maybe for the edit we'll just throw it on right yeah everything yeah. we have so it's like we just viewed it as like entertainment and like all right man what are we supposed to do just laugh about it yeah so we had a lot of fun <laughs> like we just flipped it it's like why are we gonna cry let's just have fun with it and let's see what we can do and we're just we just locked ourselves up learn some of the other skill sets like marketing and sales and then yeah yeah and another thing i want to add on that is like if someone's out there right now at the lowest record yourself make a little video at your lowest and at your highest mm -hmm. that things will pass it happens like it, it'll go by but if you if you're at your lowest again just go back to a video that's exactly what we did too so we were at our highest and we had videos of us just being like really happy at that time yeah which we time. thought it was the highest yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then when we were at our lowest, dude, I would just look back at it. And it was like, oh, yeah, we'll get back to that. Or even at your lowest, just make a video. And then when you're back at your highest, look at that video. Where, dude, things, nothing really changes. Like It's like 
It's a big oak tree, right? An oak tree has been there for seven, eight hundred years and it's been through the storms, everything, right? The highs, the lows. So that's the mindset that you really need to take. It's like when you're at your lowest, it's like, okay, no problem. When you're at your highest as well, like we pulled in like 125K in a day. We're like, I mean, we want to jump up in numbers. Like, no, 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 hold up. There was a point where we also, you know, let relax. It's fine. It's like trying to stay balanced is is key, man. Yeah, the balance. Yeah, that's huge, man. Like being able to, you know, humble yourself. And then when you're low, you know, bring yourself up. Yep. Right. Finding that yeah. equilibrium is huge. That's one thing I've learned too. So I think that's great advice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool hearing your story, right? You know, uh, you're, you're standing in line for the water and you're like, dude, how does this make sense? Yeah. It reminds me of what Trump, uh, uh, Trump said. He said, you know, one time he was, he was out with his, uh, daughter? his wife, yeah. Or yeah, daughter yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were talking about the homeless person yep. and, and they're like, man, you know, you know, I wonder how that homeless, well, that homeless person's 1.8 billion dollars richer, richer than, than me. me. Yeah. Crazy. Or 800 million, whatever it was, okay. right? It was a ridiculous amount. And, uh, but he bounced back. It's all the mindset, right? I have, I have a book, you know, think like a billionaire up there. Right. So, okay, cool. And so talk to me, I want to get, are you guys cool with going more? Thing, yeah, sorry, yeah. I just want to hit on your point. Yeah. Right? You said, what would you say or something? Mm -hmm. Bro, like it's, you're going through nothing. And this is something we also talked about. It was like, this mm -hmm. is nothing. 850 K. Okay. There's someone right now Mm -hmm. We just found out all their family members died in a bomb strike yeah. or whatever, in Syria or something. Yeah. It's like, what are our problems compared? We're it's living. numbers. We're living, we're breathing. So it's like, relax. It's okay. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. I mean, it is a lot, but it's not as bad as you think. you just going through a breakup. It's probably the best thing that can ever happen to you. Yeah. Man. You know, it's just, it's just flipping it to your advantage. Like, are you either going to cry about it or you're either going to be like, all right, what can I do to take the best out of it and just go over yeah. my life? Yeah. Turning it into your competitive edge. That's it. Boom. Yeah, I love that. Let's. Are you guys cool with going more tactical? Sure. Yeah. Let's, let's get into some tactical want. stuff. I want to get into some tactical stuff because uh, you seem and correct me around. Marketing is like your forte. You're good at sales too, but that's like the thing that you were like, dude, this is my skill, and yours is sales. So I'd love for each of you guys to share like marketing one on one. Where should someone go to learn? What's the step by step process you took or you'd recommend to like start to learn marketing? And, um, you know, how to apply those to make their first, you know, 10 yeah. to 100K a month. I'll tell you this one second. I actually learned all my sales skills from Zerar. So he, since he's the CEO, he knows everything. Like as a CEO, you should know that from the beginning, from marketing to sales to fulfillment, that's the biggest thing. So yeah. everything I literally learned from him. Wow. Yeah. So that's huge. But then, yeah, talk about sales. What's How did you train a sales superstar? Because I look over this guy all the time. I'm walking around the building. Dude's closing deals, boom, boom, boom. So what are walk me through your sales philosophy and then how you transfer that. Because those are two separate skills. Yeah, you're right about that one, right? Like yeah. being a closer versus like a manager is a complete different Totally thing, different. Right? People kind of yeah. confuse like, oh, if you're a good closer, you're going to be a good manager. Mm -mm. Probably not, right? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> right? it's like, true. I learned that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'll tell you this. Like when we were, when, uh, when I was learning marketing, I was trying to learn every, because we have to make this money. We have X amount of payments every single week, every single month that I do. There's no other, we have to do this. And I put so much effort and time where I, I literally forgot how to speak. Like I couldn't, and even maybe till now, I feel like there's there's some things that I can't like, uh, yeah, it got, I mean, here's the thing. So we're in Pakistan, right? We're, we sleep at 9 a.m. because we need the time zone. Yeah. And then think about so this. 12 like, hour difference. There's, I mean, there's things that we can go into is like the electricity is like gone. Uh, like I'm on an objection handling, electric goes off. And now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. And that's months. It took me yeah. 37 sales calls to close one deal. Yeah. Now he has like an 80% close rate. Yeah. yeah. So, Persistence. So yeah. it's like marketing, learn that. And then sales, um, I give a lot of credit to other people. Like I'm not going to say, like I have my own style, of course, mm -hmm. but a lot of people like Sean Ray, Cole mm -hmm. Gordon, definitely yeah. helped. Jeremy mm -hmm. Miner, like some of these Dean, people. Dean Kazora. Have you, have you guys ever heard of Dean Kozora? No. Our, our sales manager too, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like wow. we learned a lot of things uh, from them. But like my philosophy, man, overall is the like, I feel like sales starts from marketing. Maybe I'm biased. It starts from no, marketing. No, it does. Yeah. It's the beginning Because process, it's like yeah. the context of how you, you bring someone in and yeah. the ads that we have, people literally, these are strangers. They literally say, man, that just spoke to me. It's just like, they're like, what is this thing? I, my, my sales already started while I'm sleeping, man. Yeah. I already started with the, with the marketing. Exactly. With the marketing. So what, what's key to good marketing? Cause I'm learning marketing, right? Talk to me some about it's, some principles. It's words, man. 
Talk to so me about words, it's words dude. There's nothing else. It's the same as the ladies, dude. It's all about the <laughs> <laughs> It's all about the words. It, it, it's, it's words, but it's like you being ve- like here's the biggest mistake that I've seen and we have an agency as well, right? The biggest mistake people make when they're marketing is like they make it for themselves. Yeah. Bro, you got to make it for the client, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not for yourself. Like, "Oh yeah, that looks good. The branding colors, nobody cares about that stuff." Yeah. What do they care about? What they only care about what they can get from you. Nobody cares about Everything nothing else. It's all transactional and that it's okay. It's a business. It's a business. It's supposed it's to be life, transactional. Man. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. You provide way more value. It's like, an, you know, you have an apple, someone has a dollar. When they give you that dollar for that apple to them, that apple has more value than that dollar for you. It has more value. Like to collect that dollar has more value to give that apple away. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Right. But the key to really good marketing for us is just being very direct of like no curiosity based stuff, man. That stuff comes when you're really at scale, like million yeah. a month, two million a month pass. It's very direct. If you if you take a look at some of our ads, it's like, this is what we have. Do you want it? And then also it's like the specific offer. Hmm. The offer also plays a big part of marketing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Picking the right offer and like being at a at an intersection of like, for example, for us, agency. Why did we choose that? We could have chose a lot of things. Every, like I view my competitors as my business partners. One of my, for example, competitors, Ty Lopez. He mm-hmm. did all the heavy lifting. He's the one who who told everyone, start an agency. What is an agency? Now he has to sell them on what an agency is. We, we just come in. We just clean house. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, thank you very much. Oh, I love so that. So we let these people. And that's one thing, like our philosophy. We were not. We probably will never, like, create something brand new. We're going to take it. We're going to give it such a spin and such a twist where it looks so different and unique and more superior than anyone ha- else has ever seen before. But it's the same vehicle, man. Like uh-huh. we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh-huh. So our sales starts in the marketing side of things. Uh-huh. And when it comes to sales part, it's uh-huh. just it's just conversation, right? And uh-huh. then people feel they know you're capable. They know they know you're good. And then they just they that passion just goes into their bones. Yeah, Ooh, I love that, dude. However, one thing is is that if you're a sales rep and you're like, hey, well, that's the offer, right? Though, right? But like, it's it doesn't work like that sometimes. And this is this is how I close. My sale starts. My process, my sales process starts way before even the calls, um, mm. like on my calendar. So as soon as it's booked, that's exactly like when my sales process starts. Send them a message. Hey, this is Mo. Excited to chat. And then even after the call, suppose I don't one call close him. Dude, after so, the call, so right before he's sending videos as well. Yeah. What kind like, of videos? Selfie style? Yeah, dude, literally selfie. I'm like, look, hey, I'm excited to chat. Um, here's a few resources before the call. Just go through them. If you have any questions, concerns, you shoot me a message. It's my personal line. I don't go through a CRM, by the way. It's my personal line. So mm-hmm. they, anytime they text me, like even at 3 a.m., dude, I will respond. If they call me at 3 a.m., like there's, there's people who call me at 3 a.m., I wake up and I'll respond <laughs> because it's a relationship. Wow. It's a relationship. It's not, it's not like a, they don't feel like it's silly, even though it's not. Like they have so many clients in my thing. Whenever they text me, dude, five minutes back, I'll, I'll respond. That's, that's impressive. That's so, so to speed to lead. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, bro. Speed that to lead. That's huge. the biggest thing. I agree, yeah. dude. Spe- success loves speed. Yeah. That's what I learned from Absolutely. one of my first coaches. Delay kills dreams. Yep. hundred percent. So, so what are you, okay. So you're texting them a video before the call to confirm it. Yes. So, right. So what else? What are you putting in that video? What do you think makes a good video? Cause you could put a bad video that could hurt show rate, man. I'm not getting on with that loser, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm looking for a few things um, in that video. I just want them to feel like, Hey, I I'm building a relationship. That's all my, uh, my whole sales process is relationship based. So I'm sending them a video. I'm like, Hey, this is Mo excited to chat on X, Y, Z date. If you have any questions, concerns, shoot me a message and we'll, I'll take care of that. And then, um, a day before the actual call, like at night, I'll send them a message like, Hey, do you have the zoom link? Do you have this? Do you need help? Do you need to reschedule sometimes? Um, and then in the morning, like of the call, I'm like, Hey, are we still on for today? And then show rate bumps up like that. The people are already going onto the calls and knowing who I am. So it's not like the first time they've ever seen me. That objection never comes up. So they know you want to celebritize yourself. That's very, very big. If we want to celebritize our closers yeah. before they hop on a call. So right? smart. Because it takes, yep. if they don't know who you are, it takes 10, 15 minutes just to establish that frame, right? If they if they come in with a leadership frame, now you got to work. Because you can't, I mean, at least what I believe, you can't sell if you're not in the leadership frame. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? To maintain, it's like 15 minutes. So there we go. That, that calendar efficiency goes down. So it's like, what can we do prior to the call that I'm the leader Yep. and you want what I have, right? Totally. That's the biggest thing, like flipping that dynamic and any like, yeah. That's just how, how do you celebritize a closer, right? If he's brand new, uh, you know, it's sales. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, even going, 
to um, like one of our closers does this pretty well. It's like I have a VSL. He just puts in a little, little loom. He's like, hey, hey, Jason, just saw you just saw your application. By the way, I, I noticed that you're in New York. You just take the what do you call the, that area, code. the area code, put it's it in. It. Bro, it's just these small. It's the smallest things. Huh. The biggest thing, like the small hinges swing the big door. Yeah. The smallest things. It's like people are now the, they're hooked. They're like, oh, this yeah. guy. Who is this guy? Because now here's the thing, right? Details. They, it's the yeah. details, bro. The people, they're not hopping on a call with you, my friend. You're not the only person in their life. They're hopping on five or six, usually, different other calls with their other different companies. And those sales reps, they're doing the exact same things, right? So it's like, what? just one thing. Can, what can I do? One thing that's going to be different. So that way, now they're like, well, who is this guy? The, the best way that I look at, like how he does it, he does a really good style, is like after the call, I have him show me some of the, some of the, like, some of the messages. These people are sending paragraphs yeah. after the call. We get like it's not even only about the business, just the personal life. Yeah, and like we go to lens, like for example, like last night I shot a video about a baby. Like someone's, uh, someone's like she no showed. Yeah, so this is this lady in Australia. Her name is Beth. If you're watching, <laughs> um, her baby's in the hospital, which is really really sad. So I made Zora shoot a video, and that video it really touched her. She was like, oh, the CEO really cares about me, and he really does. Like he he kept following up with me. He was like, hey, is the baby okay? Um, but just doing that video. And even if you're a sales rep and you're just looking like, hey, you don't have the CEO right next to you. Well, what you can do is typically you have like daily sales meetings, right? And this is what our closers do. They literally just spin their chair around. Suppose that like the, the monitor's here. They make a video. The CEO's right there or the sales manager and they just point at him. And the sales manager's just like this. He's just waving. Dude, and just and just say their name out and be like, hey, Beth, Zarar shooting this. Um, I was telling Zarar all about you. And he's, he's very sad about your current situation, which he actually was. Um, and he's just giving your condolences or whatever, right? Bro, these people melt. They melt. And here's the biggest thing you asked about like a new sales rep. Mm -hmm. Bro, you, if you guys don't even know about anything about the offer, no problem. If you can, it's, <laughs> well, it is a problem, but like it's, if you're starting, right? It's like this. If you care more about the client than they care more about themselves, you're done. Like you're good. You don't even, man, it's like sometimes we hop on. It's like the guys, they're not even asking what is the they, they ask after. It's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then they, they're like, oh, so how does this thing work? Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. like We've had like 15 yeah, minutes for 20 grand piff. It's yes. so Is that good or people, bad in your opinion? Yeah, exactly. It can like, create issues because you're not setting so, the right expectations, 100%. right? I mean, that doesn't always happen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That if it does, case, though, yeah. The reason why it happened is because they realize how much we actually care about that. Yeah, yeah care and certainty. Caring, yeah. Supreme yep. confidence. And caring so much about them where they're just like, oh, man, this guy is... Like, he cares more about my success than I care about myself. Of course. Like, let me just work with him. That's all. Huh. That's good. Yeah. You got anything to add, Mo? No, he hit it. Hit, hit it right it. on the yeah, head? Absolutely. That was super valuable. Guys, drop some. So, guys, watch. If you're watching on the podcast, we do these live with all of my uh, inner circle clients that are in my certification. So, we've got a handful of guys on here, about, you know, six, seven guys that are jumping on today. And, uh, guys, drop some, drop some heat in the chat. If that was valuable, I know I, I personally, if I was a sales rep, I would be immediately implementing that. Like yeah. immediately I'd be like, dude, next time I'm on a call, boom. And I would do that. Actually, I would mention, Hey dude, I was just on a, a meeting with Todd, you know, cause I used to sell for Todd Brown. So I'd be like, Oh, I was just on a meeting with Todd. You know, he was just talking about this, this, and this, boom, we got to get back on right. Following up. How many times should a sales rep follow up after a call? And they say they're not ready to move forward. There is no limit. There's no, yeah, that's like, that's, a, How, that's not a good question, right? What's, I mean, like, what's the frequency? Closed, I just closed someone that I was setting a year ago. So like I talked to him a year ago, my first ever triage call, by the way, first ever triage call. Yeah. We closed him a few like weeks ago. I, I think, think three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Three weeks ago. 10 K piff. Wow. Yeah. So you, so you started taking calls a year ago for sales first setting setting. So setting. he was setting, I was closing. So yeah. we had that dynamic. But that was the first time you got into sales a year ago. Yeah. So it, dude, I've been closing for the last two months. Yeah. He just. He's going wow. 50k deals like it's nothing. It just started two months ago. This guy started two months ago. How many? How much revenue Dude, have you closed? It's um, I make 20 grand commissions every single month since I started. Easily. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. That's good. Yeah. 20 grand just started closing. That's why I personally yeah. believe for I call it freedom closing because you have mm -hmm. time freedom, location freedom. And you can Absolutely. make the money. It's the easiest way because you don't have to learn the marketing. You can plug right into the sales as long as they have a good fulfillment system. You have your checks and balances. And it's like this. Even if you want to launch your own business, mm -hmm. I if I were to go back, sales. 1,000% commission only sales. Um, just like you know, some of you guys here. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I would do because not only are you learning 
sales, but you're also learning a little bit of marketing. Like, oh, this is the lead flow. This is how it works. If you ever want to launch your own business and then the fulfillment, like you get to see a couple things because you're on the front lines. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, then you can, you know, whatever you want to do, but, and then and the money wise, like the stress, the stress of being a business owner. Oh, oh like they <laughs> talk froze, to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> they froze all our accounts for like four weeks. So now we have to make, like people need to get paid. Employees need to get paid. Like we're like, they're like, hey, we got to get paid. So Dude, now we have to, personal, personal stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like personal money. And then you're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get it back. It, it's like, it's there's stressful. so many things, right? So, many so it's like, as a sales rep, it's like, it's, it's not easy, but it's like, cool. If you have the skill sets, mm -hmm. if you have that, you have a calendar, you manage it, you have, you're in full control, close deals. There's no stress. You're good. Woo. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, that was one of the things that I noticed. Like, you got to worry about lead flow. You got to worry about client fulfillment, clients getting results. You got to worry about operations, finance, legal, legal yes. taxes, right? Ads. I mean, there's so many things. So it's just like, dude, why don't you just go super deep on one skill? It's an easy skill. It's silly to get started. We all do sales, whether you're introverted, extroverted, doesn't yeah. matter, right? Right. One of the guys on here, Parsa, right? Doesn't even, his English isn't even his first language. Yep. Made eight thousand dollars Canadian last month, first month. Amazing, right? It's yeah. like it's like, dude, like it doesn't matter. Like he was like, well, my accent. I'm like, dude, forget about your accent. Get better at your accent, but dude, just push through. And because he's learned the tonalities, mm -hmm. people will even be like, what was that? And because he has such a good tonality, like he's able to to just push through. Yeah. What are some other important things? Like I know you guys are like you were telling me one time we we're hanging out. Like, dude, I just overcame like eighteen objections or twenty five objections. Yeah. Like, like. Talk to me about the mindset to overcome that many objections and how, how can one develop that? Because I, I know sales reps, biggest mistake I see new sales reps making, uh, it's too much money. Oh, okay. You know, and they start freaking, yeah. they give up the first no. Yeah. First okay. Of all, I ha have a great day. You know, you never take BS from people. That's my yeah. biggest rule. And the thing is that, yeah, people will tell you. So there's actually three rules of sales for me. This, this is what I follow. Mm -hmm. First one is always look at the best interest of the client. Always deliver the best interest. Look for the best interest for the client. And typically, the best interest of the client is he's not going to be comfortable with it. Okay? And people will fight like hell to stay outside of their comfort zone. So just knowing that, that maybe the program is like exactly what they need. Whatever you're selling is exactly what they need. But they're like, hey, they're going to give you like BS. So if they're dropping so many objections, I just want to understand like before I get into the, before I handle them, I'm not looking for the money. I really don't care about the money. I like it's my style. I don't care about the money. I, I care about them making a decision. So I'm just going to, it's not like cornering them, but I'm putting them in a position where it's like, look, it's either you're saying yes or no. That's typically like how I handle the objections. But Zara it's may like have this, a little man. bit of a different. Mm -hmm. You raise your, again, it's philosophy, right? Like as a company, I'll explain. And then as a sales rep, like you'll understand as well. Here's our philosophy. We have an ad out. They raised their hand. They became a lead. They gave us their phone number, email, name. Mm -hmm. They did it. We didn't. Like we just had it out there. Now, as a closer or a setter, it is your 100% supreme responsibility to help them as best as you possibly could. You need to show up for them, mm -hmm. right? And we were just, there is no stopping. Like, it's just like, yes or no. Like, <laughs> yeah. But we'll give time to though. It's not, it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like one call closed. No, 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 no. We understand life is there. But mm -hmm. it's like, you can't ghost us. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're like, yeah, yeah, you chose it, right? Yeah. You wanted it. You hopped on a call. Yep. Here I am showing up as the coach that you wanted to. And mm -hmm. this is, if I'm doing all this for free, just imagine the level of work I'm going to do on the back end for you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you do any uh, like yes, no, maybe frameworks that you set at the beginning of the call? Like, Hey, just want to, you know, or no. We, we, I mean, we try experimented with all that. We felt like it was a little too much pressure. Yeah. What, what has been working for you guys on the calls? Anything, any special sauce you want to share? Like what you guys are doing on framing, discovery, pitch, like what, what's, is there any secret sauce you have that you want to share? I think every closer has their own style. You want to, yeah. Yeah. For me, like I do a little bit of like the, Hey, are we making a decision today? So this is how I frame it. I'm like, okay. Um, so if we were able to provide you the right process, right system and get you to that $10,000 per month, are you able to make the decision today? And some people will say no. Some people will say yes. Dude, people say no. I'm understanding like what their objection may be. So I'm, I'm thinking about how to handle it throughout the rest of the discovery and while I'm pitching them, right? So I'm hitting that point. That's one way to do it. Just like really understand where they're at. And then even just like financial checks, like where they're at financially. And then first of all, the biggest thing is that, is this program even the right fit for them? Um, and if they truly see that, hey, this guy is, he doesn't care about the money too much. He just cares about if this is like, if I'm actually gonna get the value that he's saying out of it and he truly believes in it and he's more confident 
in, he's more confident in me than I am in myself. If he does that, then dude, they'll hand you all their life savings to you and they'll trust you. Yeah. That's my kind of like style where I believe in the person more than they believe in themselves. Yeah. I'd say the same, man. Yeah. That's such a good, powerful move. Like, and but you actually have to do it. You, like, you truly, yeah. here's the biggest sale you have to make. Sell yourself onto it first. I, I say, I the sell biggest that sale you got 100%. Make. There's no faking it. You can't like, fake it. If you it. really want to be a high level sales rep and you want to be, I mean, sure, you can maybe make a lot of money like being fake or whatever, but you're going to burn out. If you truly want to be a solid and a solid human being, being able to sleep at night and like doing the right thing, you have to first sell yourself onto this is the best, most efficient, quickest way for this type of person to get the results that they want. So you sell yourself on the company and mm -hmm. on the offer. And now you just come in and you're just there like, you know, swords out and let's go, man. Yeah. Dude, I love that. Sweet. Okay, cool. And as we're starting to kind of wrap towards the end here, what else do you feel like would be important for a beginner to make their first 10, 15, 20,000 a month online? Like what are some- got to be part of, a, of some sort of a group or some sort of a mastermind. I'll tell you, like, Bridger, one of the biggest, there's two mistakes we mm -hmm. ever made. If I can analyze of all the stuff we went through, two mm -hmm. mistakes. Okay. Number one is we turned off paid ads. That was a pretty big mistake. I mean, at least for us. Right? I'm not saying that everybody has, uh, that's yeah. just, I can speak for myself. But the number two thing, which I think that is very true for most people, we mm -hmm. left the mastermind that we were in that got us the success. We were like, oh, we're good. We, we got cocky. I mean, we were like, I was like 19 at that time, I think. Maybe 18, 19. Uh, when, we first, when we first cracked the system, we left that mastermind. One of the, I don't know why we did that. Like, maybe we thought we're like, yeah, because we, you know, like people would start to talk about us. We're like, oh, we're good. Worst mistake we can ever make. It's wow. like either stay in that mastermind or go to a different one, but like stay mm -hmm. part of a circle. Stay plugged in, guys. A hundred percent. Even if you feel like, man, like the investment, the, trust me, man. Why, Bridger, maybe I'm just assuming for you. Mm -hmm. Why are you here in Arizona? Why are you in this specific building? Is it because of the people? I mean, say? it's the people, the quality of the building. Uh, it's a lot of factors, yeah. but absolutely power and proximity for right. sure. I, I like exactly. to be, I like to be around other like-minded people. That's it. Cause it inspires me, right? I can look over, you know, I can walk around this building. I can see five, six people that are all building businesses yep. focused. I'm like, dude, I need to work harder. Right. 100%. It's just like, dude, exactly. I, I need to be smart. That's exactly you know? why we're here as well. Yeah. Right. It's like, that's the only, we came from San Diego. Like, you know, yeah. after Pakistan, we went to San Diego and we're like, man, we just need to be around these people because we realize like not, and then we're part of a figure board room. That's where we met yeah. it's like 70 grand just to get in before that we paid like more money before that we were in clients and communities, $24,000 mastermind. We're just now, we're just like spending money. It's the highest ROI yeah. that you can ever get. It's not ads. It's investing in yourself. It's investing in your brain because like uh -huh. we talked about those skill sets, no one can ever ta yep. take away from you. You can be 850 in debt and you can bounce back in like no six problem. months. You guys bounce back. So you guys skills. paid that back in six months? No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a present. Like, maybe yeah, yeah. now. I think now we can, we can like, if we were, Yeah, yeah, right? if you guys could. How but, quickly did you pay it back, just out of curiosity? Oh, man, it, a year and a half, so, two years? Yeah, around, I think, like, right under a year and a half. Year and a half? Yeah. yeah. How much have you guys spent on yourselves, investing in yourself? Oh. Like, masterminds? Yeah, masterminds, coaching programs, courses, mentorship. I'd say, like, two to three hundred K. Yeah. Combined or each? Uh, no, together. Like we're, so we're always, always part of this. Yeah, yeah, we're always part of this. Yeah. Two to three hundred grand. What's the most you've ever spent on a coaching program or mastermind? Um, seventy grand for for cool board. Yeah. Seventy but grand. No, actually, we paid it more. We paid it like, more. We paid it more. <laughs> yeah, you paid it more <laughs> yeah, for extra consulting more. and stuff. In the yeah. beginning, we paid him, and then not, like it's over a hundred grand just with yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, over a hundred grand, guys. Listen, I, uh, there's so many people watching this, right? They they hop on with me, they hop on with other people. Oh, it's a lot of money. Oh my God. Like they're crapping themselves. They're sweating bullets over five grand, 10 yeah. grand. I'm like, guys, like you don't understand. Like the people that I surround myself with have spent hundreds, if not millions. Like I had Cole on the podcast, 3.3 yeah. yeah. million he's spent. He's 10 X, right? And he's doing way more than 10 X, yeah. right? Or he's doing about 10. So it's like, you just need to invest more in yourself, right? And he's like, dude, I'll even buy people's programs. Even if I, I'm smarter than them, I'm doing more than them yeah. just to see if there's one or two things I can do. That's like he's it. a free, he's a psycho competitor. And that's why he's the top of the industry. hundred percent. And then right? the other thing is, it's like, man, especially if you guys get an objection of like, oh, that's a lot of money. It's like, okay. And I mean, I don't know if this is FTC compliant or not, but what are your, what were your goals, right? Like if they're trying to make 10 K or 20 K a month, it's like, isn't that crazy? Right. It's like, you, it's, it's just like 10 grand to make something like 20 K a month for the rest of your life. Potentially, you know, that's. Yeah, exactly. Five, 10 grand to learn a skill set That's going to make you financially free to make 50, a hundred, 200 grand a yeah. year. It's complete no brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. What, what else, uh, 
what else do you guys have as far as a beginner getting started? How, how do you stay consistent? Right. Because I think one of the things that I've seen a lot of people do is they get started. Right. There's the five, uh, uh, you know, stages. Right. Of an emotional journey. Mm -hmm. Right. There, first, you're, you're like, oh, dude, I'm all excited. Right. And you're like, oh, dude, I didn't realize how hard this was. Then you're in the valley of despair. You're like, crap, dude, this is really hard. This is difficult. And then you're like, OK, I understand how hard it is, but I think I can get through it. Informed optimism. And then eventually you make it. So how how have you guys coached your, your clients? Because you guys work with a lot of clients. How many yeah. guys, how many people we do you work 80 with? 80 active clients right now. 80 yeah, active clients. Yeah. 80 active clients right now, you know, that all pay you anywhere from what? 8,800 is our lowest uh, right now. And then we go up to 50K right now. Up to 50K. 8,800 to 50K, right? 8,800. Yeah, 8,800 yeah. to 50K. And what do you guys coach them on, right? Give us some of the, the, the nuggets to really become that CEO and overcome some of the obstacles. Cause I'm sure when they're running a business, things fall apart. Oh yeah. So how, how do you, how do you keep it together when things are falling apart? And how do you, how do you share that? With yeah, someone? man, a big part of it is just like use our team versus them trying to, uh -huh. you don't even know how to interview people. Like we, that's a skill set in its own. Yeah. We talk, what you talked about picking the right people. Okay. How do you do that? How do you interview? How do you source? Where do you source them from? Then when you get them, how do you train them? Then how do you retain them? Like all that is like, we've done all that work for you. So take what we've built from there. We're going to help you become the CEO you need to become. We're going to build your logos to the branding documents, to the website. We're going to run your ads. We're going to close deals for you. We're even going to fulfill. But if we give you this really, really fast F1 race car, you're going to crash it and burn. Yeah. So we driving. need to train you on to becoming that CEO that you need to become in order to run this business successfully. So we go through them like this is the first stage. This is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. We're not just keeping them in the dark because we know that we're not going to be working with them for forever and ever. We're not, in, you know, uh -huh. we don't live in delusion land. We need to hand over the key. So it's like, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Any questions, right? It's like, no or yes. Okay, cool. Let's, let's go a little bit deeper into that. So we have really, really high, highly trained, um, you know, client success managers mm -hmm. who have their own agencies in the past. Um, who are some of the best copywriters as well. So they have unlimited one-on-one -on -one access to them as well as us. So they, like clients can like, even for the 8,800, mm -hmm. they can come directly to us as even well. Even leads. Even like, leads. Like man. I said, yeah. like there's leads that hit me up at like 3 a.m. And they're like, yeah, I just, I didn't have the money to invest with you guys, but I try to do it on my own. And this is where I'm stuck. Dude, I'll help them out. But like, that's that one-on-one -on -one support as well that they have throughout the whole process. They have my personal line. They can shoot me a message anytime. Yep. Yeah. I love that, man. Cool. Well, guys, is there anything else you feel like we did not cover that you feel like would be important for the audience that's like, dude, I was looking forward to sharing that. or anything on your guys' heart? Yeah, like, I will say one thing. Yeah. Since I kind of moved, I did pretty, move pretty fast. I went two months into closing. Um, the biggest thing that I saw was delivering everything with confidence. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Hmm. Like, I may not have the best sales skills in the world, but I deliver everything with confidence on my calls. Like, mm -hmm. because... Another thing is that I'm the offer owner, so I know what the fulfillment looks like on the back end. Dude, most of our clients, they always win. Um, I know that as an offer owner, but like as a sales rep, dude, the best thing that you can do is learn your offer. Maybe even invest. There's a few closers that invested into our program first. Yeah. And then they came back and they started closing for us. Uh, Smart. Those yeah. are the best closers. Those are the best Because they've, they've, they've been like, dude, I literally paid the money that you did to dude, he brings invest. Up yeah. On calls. yeah, all the time. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, so Mitchell, you guys remember Mitchell? Yeah. So I was hanging out with Mitchell the other day and I, it reminds me of that's what happened with Mitchell, right? He was, he, he worked with Cole and, and, uh, he would literally, you know, say, dude, I literally bought this program. Like, you know, and he would just close them so easily. Like, this is the best skill ever, you know, et cetera. You want to talk to a client? Yeah. I am the client. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what he would do, dude. And he would just crush it. So, so get familiar, get confident with the product you're selling, really believe in it. And that's one of the things I teach people right off the bat. Like you need to interview the business owner, mm -hmm. like actually yeah. become the CEO ask of your own questions. life. Yeah. Ask, ask good questions. And that's what I teach my people. So if anybody, you know, talks to any one of my sales reps, I give them an entire list of all the questions. How many yeah. setters and closers do you have? What's the average commission? What's the most commission, right? What's the lead flow, right? What's the marketing look like? What's the best client results you've had? What's the worst client results you've had? What's the average? So then they're yeah. getting all the metrics to make an educated decision, yep. right? Because that's what I would do, Yeah. right? With the skills I have, I can pretty much cherry pick an offer that I want to close on. I'm still getting paid for, I, I close for one month with Brian. I'm still getting paychecks, Yeah. right? From just, just 50, 1500 bucks just from payment plans that I had, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, when you have the skills and that also as a, as a closer, that makes you look really good to the business owner. Wow. This guy's sharp. If he's taking it this serious on the interview, 
and he's not just like he's yeah. losing his frame like oh you know whatever like you know versus like no no, no i have standards where are you guys at then it's like wow this guy's serious he's gonna treat the clients right too he's gonna treat the clients Prospects. right he's gonna have yeah. the authority frame yeah. i'll just add a little bit of yeah. like i see this in the marketplace right you know it's i call it monkey branching Clo uh, offer to offer just jumping jumping okay. jumping it's like hold up there there's no the grass is never going to be greener mm -hmm. like i know i completely agree with you is if you're a closer Go all out in the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. really try to understand. Pick the right partner mm -hmm. and stick with them. Yeah, it's Things going to be yep. up and down. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah. Right? That doesn't mean if, if lead flows off for, like, three days, oh, let me look for another offer. Hold up, bro. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Right? Yep. <laughs> if a call, I mean, what we believe in is, like, if a call comes onto the closer's calendar or the setter, it's like, that is your responsibility. The yep. offer owner yeah. has spent that hard-earned money. It's not for free, my friend. Yeah. yeah. That's your job. Yep. squeeze liquidate as much as you possibly can totally. right? do the right do the right thing so having that level of grit while you're on an offer when things go up and down and just going all out man on sales at least at least like for me it's like very physical i, I literally fainted on call that i don't care. <laughs> no i'm serious I was you fainted on, on call once yeah multiple times yeah yeah fainted yeah. So you dropped like, the pitch like 9,800. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 okay, not fully. I'm sorry, I'm blacking out. I'm like, I'm like, I can't see. And I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on? And I have to like, you know the, you know the fighter pilot thing? You have, to, you have to do that. And then my, yeah, 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 multiple times. Wow, that's crazy. Dude, my so, nose was bleeding the other day. Yeah, yeah. I think I told you this. I told, I told you so that's just Dude, a, these MMA fighters, they got nothing on high ticket closing. Yeah. yeah. They think they're in the ring yeah. getting beat up. Dude, dude, spend a day a high ticket phone closing. I challenge any MMA fighter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you're going 20K, 50K for BizOp, good luck with that. They're going to fight just like he's, a, they're going to fight like hell to stay where they've always, zone. in their comfort zone. And sales, the only, your only job really is to take them out of the comfort zone. So expect a fight, man. Like that thing yeah. is brutal. You know, it's, it's a, it's a bloodbath, man. But, <laughs> but people like, that's what they want though, right? Because at the end of it, <laughs> no, check this out. At the end of it, three months later, they're going to be like, thank you. That was the best decision of my life. Yeah. Thank you for pushing me yeah. a little bit there. So it's like, all right. When, when we realize like that whole cycle is there, I'm going all out. Mm -hmm. I'm going all out. Like, I don't care what happens. Totally. Totally. You have something to add? Amazing. Anything what he said. Yeah. He's hit it right on. So. Sweet. Yeah, guys. Well, listen, anything else that you want to add? Any other questions? Because I think what we're going to do next, and this is uh, another reason why you want to subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, we're going to do a part two. Okay. We're going to cut it right here. We're going to do a part two. We're going to do a live Q and a with my inner circle students. And so guys, make sure you have some very powerful questions ready based on what was shared. We're going to get straight into that here in a second, but before we do anything else to sum up your guys' story and, uh, and then we'll get into making sure they can get connected with you guys. Man, there's so many, but like I was, <laughs> I remember one time I was like literally rolling on concrete. I had a panic attack. I had multiple of those. Wow. Yeah, rolling on car, I can't breathe. I'm like, man, my my face is numb. My mom is screaming. By the way, our car broke down too. I know this in is Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were rushing to the hospital. We went too hard with the the engine or something. I don't know. Something happened. The car stopped. So my mom is in the middle of the street trying to flag down a car at 11:30 p.m. And I'm I'm rolling on concrete. My dad thinks I'm dying because it was COVID time asthma too. Had yeah, asthma. Panic my dad was like, "Oh, this guy's dead." <laughs> That's what he thought. And my mom's in the middle. She's screaming, and I'm sitting in the car, and we're just going. I, and some random guy was just hitting him in the back. I'm like, "Drive faster, please! I can't breathe." Some dude stopped over and picked him up. Some old guy. Some old guy, yeah. and I'm I, I, I you're hitting breathe, the guy. man. I'm like yeah. hitting him, like man, like I can't breathe, you know, and yeah. That's just one piece, right? And Jeez. every day there's something happening. Every day you, there's. You wake up in the morning and you're like. Should I check my phone? Should I not? It's like, you're just- As the CEO or like the owner, everyone comes to you. Yeah. Everyone, when shit hits the side- Yeah, and like, you know what they're saying? Like, they're like, yeah, we need 17K here. Yeah, we need 12K. It's like, where's this money going on my ATM? Dude, I have three cents in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these people are just like, yeah, yeah, bring money. And then you borrow money from here and you're like, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to pay it back. You try to give money to the right people, they run away with it. And now you're stuck. Now you have both parties. Like, what am I supposed to do? There's a movie that I can't remember what the name is, but I, I don't know. Uh, uh, dude, this reminds me. I just watched a movie the other day. It's called Billionaire Boys Club. You guys seen okay. that? I've heard Bro, of it. Go watch it on Amazon. It's got a couple good actors. But dude, this reminds me of this. <laughs> you're going to watch it. You're going to be like, dude, if you guys kept going down that path, that's what your guys <laughs> yeah, would, would, that's what would happen. Billionaire Boys Club. But, uh, but yeah, so the moral of the story is. It. <laughs> I mean, there's so many morals. <laughs> uh, like it's picking the right people. I truly believe one plus one equals 11, hundred percent. And even if you're a closer, right? It's like, you may not be a business owner, 
But in a way you are, man. Like you're taking 10%, 15% commission, whatever your structure is. And you're taking it from like the money that you generate for that business owner. So you're kind of partners with them, which is why it's so important to pick the right ones. Yeah. One plus one equals 11. And that's something that we live by. And yeah, we're always going to be together, man. It's like teamwork. Yeah. And then for example, closers, the setter and closer relationship. Oh, absolutely. Huge. Yeah. Talk about that for a second. That's one of the things I, I really hit home in my program. So huge thing for me was I trained all my clothes or my setters. So I literally just picked up my friends from Pakistan that were my high school, like friends. I picked them up. Our whole team is high schoolers. Like, yeah. oh, we're doing 400 grand a month from third world country high schoolers. From right now? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right they're now. All, they're all from there. So I picked them up, hand trained them for like three months. Every day, one-on-one calls. Every single day. Train them up. Dude, they're savages. They they make like $400 every day. $400 yeah. a day. Um, $400? Well, you know, How that's the only reason easy. why we have them there. And this is the worst part about it is that, dude, they work night shifts. So like seven days a week, night shifts. Um, in their country or yeah, here? Yeah. In their country. Okay, Pakistan, in their country, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Dude, dude, here's the thing, though. They're loving it, dude. You know why? They're making oh, like a new surge in money. They're making yeah. so much money that, like, yeah. in, that, in that country. Yeah. Like, if they make 4K a month, for example, they're living like they're doctors, man. Yeah. Jeez. All dude. high school dropouts. All high school dropouts. All of them man. dropped out. <laughs> no <laughs> like kidding. 15 year olds. How many? Oh, wait, so you have, you have four, you said? You have how many? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. three high school dropouts that are making, what, what are they averaging per month? About four, four K? Right? Four, four to five K. Yeah. But over there, dude, that's like 30 K. Dude, yeah. dude, I know guys that join my program that want to make 5K a month, dude, in the US or yeah. Canada, dude. Yeah. That's so as there, a young guy, that's a lot money. of money, dude. It's the yeah. status, man. Like yeah. their uncles are coming to them. They're like, what are you doing? I've yeah. spent my whole life 55, 55 years old. You're 70. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing that yeah. you're making three times more than me? Right? So imagine the status. So like we realize that like that's a beautiful model mm -hmm. that we have out there. And they're the front face. They're the, they're the soldiers of the company. So yeah. they're in the trenches there. We got their skills really sharpened up though by being in masterminds, by being people, you know, close to people like yourself, like you, mm -hmm. you know, your program. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they got the skill set and they have the hustle. One of the biggest reasons why it takes hard work. Sales, mm -hmm. there's no like, you know. You can't hide. You can't hide it, bro. Behind a course, you have a coach, to put in the work. You have to do or an the offer. Work. No, yeah. you, you can't hide behind the, the offer. You have to you do have the work. You have to put in the work. Yeah. So we're like, the Americans that are, they don't even know what that work, what that work is. Like, mm -hmm. the work most is, of them don't. Most I of, find no. a couple of them off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, you, I mean, I, help I, us I, out, I, man. We need some. I got some savages, dude. I I retrain them, I reprogram No, they come to me hungry, though. I think there's a good community, right? There's a small subset. Of I've found, you know, 16, 17, but really 18 to 25 year olds that I found that are, yeah. dude, that are deathly afraid of living their life potentially like their parents. Paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Shit. Am I going to lose the house? Something happens. Dude, we're not financially set. That's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was like, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get into a place of abundance where it's like, yeah. dude, I could literally become a potato Dude, my family's taking care of, right? Like, like Grant Cardone says, he's like, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm good. To work a day <laughs> dude, you take me out, man. My family's good to go. Yeah. They got, they got doors on doors, right? And so, uh, and so, yeah, I think it's just really important to, really important to, you know, hammer home that, at the end of the day, you can't hide behind the work, or you can't hide behind anything else than doing the work, and that when you do get into an offer, build that relationship with the closer. Mm -hmm. That's so important that you were saying. Yeah, it's Absolutely. such, such it's a, a team. Nugget. And that's the yeah. thing, right? Closer is a very in a way, selfish role. But it's like, if you tag team things, and I know Grant Cardone does this on a very high level, they yeah, just tag does, team yeah. deals. Oh, all yeah. the time. Bro, yeah. it's like work together. Uh, I do two on ones. People, here's the thing when someone comes in, or a client comes in, you do a two on one, they're like, okay, this closer said this thing. This and guy's saying it too. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is a setter said it, the marketing said it. Little good cop, bad room. cop. Exactly. Yeah. You <laughs> could do that too. So it's like, half fun. Dude, I'm so sorry I had to talk to Mo, man. He's such an asshole. <laughs> Oh, yeah. One thing I'll add, that like, last piece of this, <laughs> is being hyperly dynamic on calls. As yeah. a closer, it's like, who are you talking to? This person is completely different than the next person. It's completely different than the next person. So being in their shoes of that of that person versus just trying to, you know, go through the script. Yep. And that's people just reading through the script. It's like, hold it. Try to understand what that person is saying. You know, make it about them. Customizing mm -hmm. it. I love it. Yeah, sweet, guys. Well, listen, guys, if you're watching this right now and this inspired you, make sure that you share it with someone. Okay. Because we bring you this show completely for free to help you bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Just share it with one or two people. That's all I ask. Drop your comments down below. Let me know what inspired you the most about this show. And, um, I want to make sure that you guys can get plugged into my friends here, Mo and Zarar. How can these guys find you? 
Yeah, so we have a free Facebook group mm -hmm. that we have about 5,500 uh, other agency owners. So mm -hmm. they can join that. We can probably put the link if mm -hmm. that's cool with you. Mm -hmm. And also Instagram. Um, you know, I'm pretty big on there. Zarar Amin is my handle. And people can DM me or, you know, find me on Facebook. And yeah. Mine's Mo Lockdown, M-O-L-O-C-K-D-O-W-N. It's pretty simple. Mo Lockdown. Sweet. On Instagram, yeah. Yeah, and Instagram. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on the show, the Bridge and the Gap show. Thank you very really much, dude. I love it, yeah. man. All right, guys, listen. There's going to be another episode, part two, come out with these guys. So make sure you're subscribed. We're going to go in depth on sales training, okay, and sales leadership. Okay, two separate topics that we're going to merge. It's going to be super, super valuable. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.